Teotihuacan is without doubt one of the most mysterious places within the Americas, or possibly on Earth. While the incredible complexity and architectural precision has baffled archaeologists for decades, there is a far more perplexing mystery specifically surrounding the pyramids within this ancient place. The presence of mica, a powerful radioactive insulator, is perhaps one of the biggest enigmas of these great ancient structures. Established or quite possibly re-inhabited around 100 BC until its fall between the 7th and 8th centuries, Teotihuacan was one of the largest cities in the ancient world, with over 150,000 inhabitants at its peak. According to archaeologists, the advanced design of Teotihuacan suggests that ancient builders had advanced knowledge not only of architecture but of complex mathematical and astronomical sciences. Additionally, one of the more intriguing characteristics differentiating it from many other ancient sites is the fact that from the air, Teotihuacan strangely resembles that of a modern computer circuit board. Curiously, when Hernán Cortés and his men conquered the Aztec Empire in the 16th century, they asked the natives who had built such a colossal city. The Aztec replied, We were not the builders of Teotihuacan. This city was built by the Kina Natsin, a race of giants who came here from the heavens in the times of the second sun. The Aztecs were in fact the ancient civilization that named the place Teotihuacan, yet they did not know the original name for the city. The pyramids had remained buried, hidden under several meters of vegetation for unknown millennia, only rediscovered within the last century. Then in 1906, on the fifth deck of the Pyramid of the Sun, a thick layer of laminated mica covering an enormous area was unearthed. At that time in 1906, mica was an invaluable resource, highly priced on the world market. It is used for the construction of capacitors and is considered an incredibly efficient electrical and thermal insulator, which has a melting point of over 1,100 degrees Celsius. Most of the mica found in 1906 at Teotihuacan was unfortunately robbed out, subsequently sold at a great price to resource tycoons. Fortunately, however, not all the mica has disappeared from Teotihuacan. Today, there are still a few places where you can find the original mica, carefully laid within the pyramid's body. It seems for some mysterious reason, the unknown builders of this great ancient city managed to extract and transport this mica from far away. According to tests carried out by the Viking Foundation, discoverer of one of the rooms coated with mica, this valuable material has an unmistakable signature allowing us to tell exactly where in the world it had originally been extracted. It was discovered that it had come from a region located more than 3,200 kilometers away within Brazil. This in of itself is an enigma. The only real purpose it would seem for the use of such an exotic material is for the management of electrical currents, a theory, thankfully, more and more talented minds are beginning to look at seriously. As a result, we may finally unravel one of the greatest mysteries still plaguing the modern man. What were the pyramids built for? During a previous video titled Secret Missions into the Great Pyramid, in which we covered the most bizarre of artifacts once found in a seemingly inaccessible shaft, eventually discovered to be an entry shaft into the now named Queen's Chamber. Just how this bronze ball hook and several bizarre fragments of wood found their way into the pyramids is unknown. We shared the fact that the wood had become conveniently lost, thus preventing any future dating of the artifacts or indeed this possible attempt to have once penetrated the pyramid far before the Spanish invasion of Egypt, their modern rediscovery, or indeed before the entrance to the pyramid was located. However, in a rather strange yet fortunate twist of fate, Sitting within a collection of ancient Asian relics within Scotland, an Egyptian archaeologist was shocked to rediscover these cedar fragments, once mislabeled and thus never classified, lost for almost 70 years, yet refound within an old cigar box. One has to wonder, with our prior hypothesis, and indeed the convenience of the wood somehow becoming lost, was this a deliberate act by someone? Possibly someone who realized the controversy attached to this artifact. 
What we find most compelling, however, and a possible motive to hide such an artifact are the now-realized result of modern carbon dating, showing that the wood dates to somewhere between 3341 and 3094 BC, long before the claimed construction of the pyramid. Furthermore, although many have claimed that counterweights and timber structures were utilized in the construction of the pyramids, this wood not only predates the claimed date of their creation, but does so by some 1 to 2,000 years. So any mainstream explanation for this dating anomaly is severely lacking. However, it fits perfectly with our original hypothesis and is indicative not only of a far earlier date of construction, but could indeed have been a possible successful attempt at penetrating the pyramid's deepest inner chambers, simply due to the mysterious yet impressive location in which these enigmatic artifacts were found and subsequently retrieved from. Curatorial assistant Abir Aladani found the fragments of wood as she perused the Asia section of the archives of the University of Aberdeen. Quote, Once I looked into the numbers of our Egypt records, I instantly knew what it was and that it had effectively been hidden in plain sight in the wrong collection. I'm an archaeologist and have worked on digs in Egypt, but I never imagined it would be here in northeast Scotland that I'd find something so important to the heritage of my own country." End quote. As you can imagine, we find the wooden artifacts highly compelling. There are many mysteries to be found within ancient Egypt. Unexplained, seemingly impossible mysteries, which litter the caverns, tunnels, flooded underground layers, and indeed, the once inaccessible passageways, only recently explored using advanced modern technology. However, some of the most perplexing mysteries lay in plain sight. Not only the Great Pyramids themselves, an obvious enigma for academia to explain the construction of, but many anomalous features which can be found within objects often leaving academics baffled as to an explanation. The Cheops sarcophagus being one such anomaly. Although these pyramids are entered and explored by millions of people every year, and indeed, this mysterious sarcophagus shown to many of these inquisitive explorers, what many the funded academic tour guide often leaves absent from their explanation of this supposed tomb is how exactly it arrived at its current location. As we have explored and exposed previously, the casing stones that can be found on many of the pyramids are to us not only indicative of another phase of construction work, once having been undertaken upon these structures, but due to the erosion present and the different styles featured, are in fact indicative of more than one attempt to conserve these marvelous structures for future generations. Thus, one must conclude by more than one now extinct advanced civilization. As such, the age of the sarcophagus of Cheops could be immense. So it is not surprising that it has encountered not only grave robbers, but has been vandalized also at points within the distant past. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing and frustrating, is that the sarcophagus lid is missing, a lid that could have explained the past contents of this mysterious box. Or like the tomb of Pakal, exposed extremely controversial illustrations of possible past technologies. Unfortunately, however, or rather most conveniently for academics, this lid has never been discovered. Yet what is most perplexing regarding this diorite box, notably one of the hardest workable stones on Earth, is that no one seems to know how the original builders managed to transport the box to its current location deep within the bowels of Cheops. The diameter of this supposed tomb, being too large to have traveled down any of the known tunnels, which have so far been discovered within the ancient pyramid. This leaves us with two likely possibilities. One, that the diorite box was placed there and the pyramid built around it, which is a mysterious and confusing hypothesis. 
mostly due to the lack of markings of significance found upon the sarcophagus, or indeed the lack of any dedicative markings found anywhere else surrounding it. It is as though the box was placed there without much effort to indicate any importance to his existence. Yet, to cut such a box, which has since been discovered to have been cast from one single block of diorite, would have taken tremendous effort a feat that modern man would only accomplish with the use of diamond-edged power tools, not to mention the effort that would have been involved in moving this multi-ton stone into its found location. The second hypothesis regarding how this sarcophagus found its way into its current location is that the box itself was transported to its found location through tunnels and passageways we are yet to discover possibly hinting at the fact that within this great pyramid, there are indeed many more hidden layers and cavities we are yet to explore or discover. Maybe the placement of this seemingly inanimate box was placed there to suggest exactly this. Furthermore, what was on the lid of this supposed sarcophagus? Why is it known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, when Khufu was not discovered within it? In fact, nothing was discovered within it. And why is the lid mysteriously absent? Where did the lid to the sarcophagus go? Why, if destroyed by grave robbers, was it not left where it lay? Did this lid contain controversial information, possibly pertaining to the original contents or indeed purpose of the Great Pyramids? We find the diorite sarcophagus of Khufu and indeed its unexplainable journey into the center of the pyramid, highly compelling. Teotihuacan, a site we have covered many times here upon our channel. Most recently, we discussed the impressive amount of electrical material found within the numerous pyramids that dot the site, known as mica, a notorious modern-day electrical insulator that's physical origins were found to have been from a quarry over 3,200 kilometers away, within Brazil. When Spanish explorers first visited the area, they asked the Aztecs who built these marvelous buildings. The Aztecs replied that it was the Quina Metzen, a quote, race of giants who came from the heavens in the time of the second sun. It is clearly a site of tremendous importance regarding lost knowledge here upon our planet knowledge which could have been left within our very distant past. And now, an eight-year project has discovered a secret tunnel beneath the third largest pyramid within the area. A tunnel which archaeologists suspect will lead to a royal tomb. Discovered in 2003 with the use of robotic technology, similar to the technology used to discover the secret chamber within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, rumored to also be that of a royal tomb. Littered with artifacts which have remained untouched for untold millennia, now thought to be over 50,000 separate items, shedding light onto the life of those who built this amazing place, not only reveal who they actually were, but explain their religious beliefs, their technical prowess, and indeed how they built them, but most importantly, for what purpose. Upon exploring the tunnel, Archaeologists have discovered an enormous pool of liquid mercury, and supposedly, it is a massive quantity filling a mysterious basin at the end of the tunnel. Could a king's tomb or ritual chamber possibly lay far below this pool of mysterious mercury? Mexican researcher Sergio Gomez has somehow been allowed to release all of these amazing discoveries, found beneath the pyramid of the feathered serpent publicly receiving little academic resistance since. Mercury is toxic and capable of devastating the human body through prolonged exposure. Academia perceived mercury as having no practical purpose within ancient Mesoamerica. But interestingly, it has been discovered at other sites. Rosemary Joyce, a professor of anthropology at the University of California, Berkeley, said that archaeologists have found mercury at three other sites around Central America not to mention our own research into Oak Island, which has also held a legend of liquid mercury for many years. Its presence in Teotihuacan is undoubtedly perplexing and intriguing. Gomez speculated that the mercury could be a sign that his team is close to uncovering the first royal tomb ever found in Teotihuacan. 
The mercury may have symbolized an underworld river or lake, Gomez postulated, an idea that resonated with Annabeth Hedrick, a professor at the University of Denver and the author of works on Teotihuacan and Mesoamerican art. Quote, the shimmering, reflective qualities of liquid mercury may have resembled an underworld river, not that different from the river Styx. Hedrick continues, if only in the concept that it's the entrance to the supernatural world and the entrance to the underworld, end quote. Not only did the people of Mesoamerica clearly figure out how to create or derive liquid mercury from mercury ore, they also knew of deep underground water systems and lakes that could be accessed through caves. Rosemary Joyce said the ancient Mesoamericans could produce liquid mercury by heating mercury ore, known as cinnabar, which they also used for its blood-red pigment. Yet, just how these ancient people managed to figure all these amazing things out remains a mystery. We may indeed be on the precipice of one of the most important discoveries of our modern age. We will keep you posted. Teotihuacan is without doubt one of the most mysterious places within the Americas, or possibly on Earth. While the incredible complexity and architectural precision has baffled archaeologists for decades, there is a far more perplexing mystery specifically surrounding the pyramids within this ancient place. The presence of mica, a powerful radioactive insulator, is perhaps one of the biggest enigmas of these great ancient structures. Established or quite possibly re-inhabited around 100 BC, until its fall between the 7th and 8th centuries, Teotihuacan was one of the largest cities in the ancient world, with over 150,000 inhabitants at its peak. According to archaeologists, the advanced design of Teotihuacan suggests that ancient builders had advanced knowledge not only of architecture, but of complex mathematical and astronomical sciences. Additionally, one of the more intriguing characteristics differentiating it from many other ancient sites is the fact that from the air, Teotihuacan strangely resembles that of a modern computer circuit board. Curiously, when Hernán Cortés and his men conquered the Aztec Empire in the 16th century, they asked the natives who had built such a colossal city. The Aztec replied, We were not the builders of Teotihuacan. This city was built by the Kina Natsin, a race of giants who came here from the heavens in the times of the second sun. The Aztecs were in fact the ancient civilization that named the place Teotihuacan, yet they did not know the original name for the city. The pyramids had remained buried, hidden under several meters of vegetation for unknown millennia, only rediscovered within the last century. Then in 1906, on the fifth deck of the Pyramid of the Sun, a thick layer of laminated mica covering an enormous area was unearthed. At that time in 1906, mica was an invaluable resource, highly priced on the world market. It is used for the construction of capacitors and is considered an incredibly efficient electrical and thermal insulator, which has a melting point of over 1,100 degrees Celsius. Most of the mica found in 1906 at Teotihuacan was unfortunately robbed out subsequently sold at a great price to resource tycoons. Fortunately, however, not all the mica has disappeared from Teotihuacan. Today, there are still a few places where you can find the original mica, carefully laid within the pyramid's body. It seems for some mysterious reason, the unknown builders of this great ancient city managed to extract and transport this mica from far away. According to tests carried out by the Viking Foundation, discoverer of one of the rooms coated with mica, this valuable material has an unmistakable signature, allowing us to tell exactly where in the world it had originally been extracted. It was discovered that it had come from a region located more than 3,200 kilometers away within Brazil. This in of itself is an enigma. The only real purpose it would seem for the use of such an exotic material is for the management of electrical currents, a theory, thankfully, more and more talented minds are beginning to look at seriously. As a result, we may finally unravel one of the greatest mysteries still plaguing the modern man. What were the pyramids built for? Tibet, the roof of our world. 
words do no justice to the untouched beauty of this far corner of Earth. A vast, mysterious, and sacred place, embraced and protected by miles of immovable mountains. Monasteries, built many hundreds, sometimes thousands of years ago, stand in defiance of the elements, precariously placed among the clouds. Many of these very ancient structures are said to have been built on the remnants of once even grander ancient buildings, structures many religions attribute to the gods. Among the seemingly endless mountain ranges lay one mountain which is different, one which is special. It is believed by most of Tibet, and even further afield, that the god Shiva lay buried within this sacred mountain. According to ancient beliefs, this enigmatic Tibetan mountain represents the axis of the world, the stairway to heaven. In many eastern countries, Mount Kailash is considered the holiest place on earth, some ancient sources even suggesting it is where one could find the mysterious city of the gods. It is indeed regarded within the climbing world as unascendable. A route has never been located and probably never will. Few have been brave enough to even go near this place in the past century. There may be some profound reasoning behind these ancient clusters of human beings, regarding this particular mountain over all others as sacred and as the resting place of a god. There may, however, be ulterior motives at play when it comes to the discouragement of climbers in attempting the peak. A team of Russian scientists, intrigued by the history and a possible suppression of its true nature, have suggested after covert explorations that the top of Mount Kailash is not a natural formation. It is actually the remnants of a giant man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Just how old this pyramid could be currently remains unclear. What also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid, disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone." End quote. A mysterious claim put forward in regards to the mountain concerns rapid aging when in the area. After spending 12 hours in the region, the length of nails and hair was equal to two weeks of normal growth in some cases. Several mystics have said that the mountain has a secret entrance within it, leading to the legendary kingdom of Shambhala. Legend also states that when the ice on its peak finally melts, it will reveal the eye. Professor Ernst Muldashev, PhD, a doctor and explorer who traveled Tibet extensively, said later in his life, quote, There are two underground countries, the Shambhala and Agartha, which are each part of the gene pool of humanity and civilization. Information provided by the Thule Society shows there is a higher civilization coming from the Himalayas and divided into two branches, the Shambhala and Agartha, the former being the center of power protected by unknown forces and energy." End quote. An understanding of what sort of pyramid Kailash could be, or indeed just how special it is, may take several years to establish. I will, of course, keep you posted.
The Great Pyramids of Giza Undoubtedly some of the most incredible ancient monuments to be found anywhere on Earth. Just how old are these structures? 4,000 years? 10,000 years? 100,000 years? We recently uncovered the astonishing megalithic blocks once exposed upon the east side of Cheops. Blocks which indicate that the entire skeletal structure of the pyramid is actually made with blocks similar to those found at Baalbek. 100 plus ton blocks, revealed at some point within antiquity, most likely done by a jealous ruler in an attempt to destroy and conceal the evidence of this past, more capable civilizations were. Additionally, humans are curious creatures. Not only do we now suspect that destructive phases have befallen the great structure throughout its long life on Earth, but also, like we do today, has also before experienced being marveled at, and conservation efforts in the form of more modern casting stones have been installed. These blocks, initially obstructing our view of the seemingly impossible blocks which make up its inner structure. Is there any proof to support such claims of an enormous age to be found anywhere else on Earth? Peru, a place which contains the same uncannily designed impossible pre-Incan architecture. Within the Supi Valley, some 120 miles north of Lima, is the Pyramid of Caral now claimed to be the oldest pyramid on Earth, and the clear erosion which it has experienced clearly makes it an obvious candidate for this title of incredible antiquity, once towering into the heavens, now virtually leveled by erosion over many, many millennia. This site has clearly received no later attention by a capable or interested civilization, left to rot with the overgrown mountains of Peru. Yet it possesses such similarities in architecture with ancient Mesopotamia, China, India, and indeed Egypt, is it now so unforgivable to suspect that all of these structures were actually built by the same civilization at the same time within history? The only difference being that the well-known and documented Egyptian civilization later moved in on the specific pyramidal structures of Giza for power purposes, while the Inca focused in on the ancient architectural land terracing. Interestingly, and yet more compelling, evidence supports previous hypotheses here on the channel. When Paul Kosak discovered Corral in 1948, it received little attention because it appeared to lack any historical artifacts an unusual absence of any habitational evidence usually sought at archaeological sites. Could this be due to the sheer age of these monuments? That all but the remaining gigantic stones has simply eroded away? Corral is not the only pyramid to be found within Peru. There are many more which share the same evidence of great age. Near the city of Saipan, is the largest pyramid concentration in Southern America, known as the Pyramids of Tukumi, or the Valley of the Pyramids. It has no less than three pyramid cities, which together have a stunning total of 250 pyramids. Tukumi lies on the southern margin of the valley and is surrounded by fertile agricultural land, thanks to the Tami Canal, which brings water northwards from the Chanke River a perfect strategic location for a once-flourishing civilization. Who were these people? When did they live? Thanks to ongoing research, not only is the officially upheld story surrounding such cities crumbling, but we are now getting closer and closer to finally answering these questions. When an ancient ruin is academically studied, it will often be attributed as the work of a far more recent, already studied, thus previously permitted group placed within known history, often a group simply incapable of such undertakings. Furthermore, not only do many sites hold evidence of a far older yet far more advanced builder having once been responsible for their construction, but such sites can often share characteristics with ancient ruins found far away, features from a said site also found on another continent on the other side of the globe. 
False doors, for example, found over countless ancient ruins spanning much of the world. This reoccurrence, along with many other similar signature features, are far from mere coincidence and can only be explained by a past, intercontinental, highly capable lost civilization, as we have postulated in the past in regards to many factors indicative of their megalithic legacy. Metal clamps, identified on differing continents, varying in style and composition relative to what was presumably readily available, so although they differ in style, the knowledge of how to create and use such ancient technology had clearly been the work of the same civilization. The pyramids of Uymir, for example, are six rectangular pyramids you would more than likely have never heard of and most certainly would not have been taught of their existence by modern mainstream academia. Built from lava stone without the use of mortar, they are uncannily reminiscent of many structures within the South Americas. They are located in the districts of Chacona, part of the town of Uymer, on the island of Tenerife in the Canary Islands, Spain. The structures have been attempted to be dismissed as nothing but 19th century buildings, argued as the byproduct of contemporary agricultural techniques. Yet their infamous shape and the signature building techniques incorporated into said structures are undeniably found elsewhere on Earth. Other pyramids employing the same methods and materials of construction can be found in various sites on Tenerife. In Uymer itself, there were nine pyramids, any yet regardless of academics attesting to them being no more than a century old, only six of the pyramids survive to this day. In 1990, adventurer and publisher Thor Heyerdahl became aware of the Canarian pyramids by reading an article written by Francisco Pedron in the Tenerife newspaper Dario de Avisos detailing the quote, real pyramids of the Canaries as Heyerdahl had hypothesized a transatlantic link between Egypt and Central America, which is a subtle way of saying a now lost yet once global superpower who once ruled the waves, he became intrigued by the Uymer pyramids and relocated to Tenerife. Heyerdahl hypothesized that the Canarian pyramids formed a temporal and geographical stopping point on voyages between ancient Egypt and the so-called Mayan civilization's ruins a claim we agree with, yet we posit that this contact was not between the Egyptians and Mayans, but was one and the same force, a far older, now lost, world-conquering civilization, an ingenious group who not only passed on their wisdom to every corner of the world, but even built in ways we are yet to understand. Unexplainable anomalies litter many ancient ruins to this day. Heyerdahl had predictably initiated a controversy with historians, esoterics, archaeologists, astronomers. Most of mainstream academia staunchly opposed such claims. By suggesting such an hypothesis, which flies in the face of already established paradigms, his research was predictably never pursued further than Heyerdahl personally took it. Yet I feel he succeeded in publishing a ruthlessly honest opinion in regards to the ruins, regardless of what was already apparently established as fact. And along with our research within Bosda Caves, and the similarities, differentiations, and other investigative strategies utilized to support such an argument of a now-lost world-going super-civilization, we feel the evidence for our case is now all but overwhelming there are far too many connecting factors to simply claim coincidence, and as the proof of this past civilization's capabilities becomes more apparent and in turn researched, the closer we become to finally finding these now lost ancestors. It is a pursuit for the truth, which we find highly compelling. Fort Ransom is a small place within the state of North Dakota, USA that may hold an enormous yet quietly held secret. In this small slice of the rural farming lands of the United States lies a place known as Pyramid Hill, a small, modest pyramidal mound, which is very similar in shape and size to the curious pyramidal mound found in other parts of the world, such as Silbury Hill, a chalk pyramid within the UK. Long argued by a number of funded geologists 
as a mere natural formation. However, local residents, along with historical accounts within the area, have strongly disagreed with these conclusions, since their predictable acceptance by the academic community. A vast portion of the surrounding population believe, including a number of specialist historians and archaeologists, that Pyramid Hill is in fact that of a man-made pyramid. What's more, they hold to the belief that it is the oldest pyramidal structure on Earth. What makes this site the most interesting, we feel, however, and the reason for this video, is the writing stone which was found nearby some centuries ago. Clearly very ancient cup and ring marks, and constructed to form some kind of communication. They have, however, remained undeciphered. They are incredibly intriguing, and are reminiscent of a hybrid between music and Morse code. Yet all attempts to establish a translation of the pattern have been unsuccessful. Located in the Cheyenne River Valley, in southeastern North Dakota, pitted mysteriously cup and ring marked boulders appear in Saskatchewan, South Dakota, Iowa, and many other sites all over the world. Just who created them remains a mystery. Was the writing stone left by the original builders of Pyramid Hill? If so, why is it an unknown language? Who wrote it? Is Pyramid Hill really the oldest pyramid on Earth? Built by an unknown culture who clearly spoke and wrote a highly complex and as yet undecipherable language? Perhaps one day we will find out the truth. In 1917, an amazing find was made in Indonesia. Entered into the report of the Department of Antiquities, the Dutch historian N.J. Chrome also mentioned it in 1949. Employees of the National Archaeology Research Center visited the site in 1979 for a study of its archaeology, history, and geology. If the claims are proven accurate, Indonesia possesses the oldest pyramidic structure on the face of the Earth. Buried under a mound of ancient sediment. Located around 800 meters above sea level, the site covers a hill in a series of terraces bordered by retaining walls of stone, and is covered with massive rectangular stones of volcanic origin. The Sundanese people considered the site sacred, believing it was the result of the legend of King Silowangi's attempts to build a palace in one night. Based on various dating techniques, the site has an official dating for completion by 5000 BC and quite likely much earlier. This pyramid is very old indeed. Interestingly the Lakan mountain in Borneo or rather, what the natives and tourists alike have known as a mountain for millennia, has also recently been confirmed to actually be an ancient pyramid. Drill samples from the tops of these mounds have provided carbon dates going as far back as 20,000 BC, the deeper they drilled the older the carbon dates became, peaking out at a layer of not local basalt at 90 feet. In West Java ancient knowledge had successfully been retained, indigenous communities claimed Egyptians landed, and even colonized Indonesia well before 2000 BC. The evidence for the colonization of Indonesia by the ancient Egyptians, is documented by Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles, in his volume, The History of Javam, 1830. Tomb paintings and writings show that the Egyptians were trading down the Red Sea and into the Indian Ocean. Were these structures actually created by Egyptians? Why were they placed where they lay? As I have mentioned before we know an awful lot about the Egyptian civilization, a lot of our knowledge from what they left us in written language, scrawled and hieroglyph all over these ancient monuments, we know about mummification processes in detail, we know all about their religious rituals, death practices etc, yet, alas, not one shred of writing on how they constructed such or inspiring tombs, or why make them in the shape of a pyramid, out of millions of tons of accurately placed stone. Did the Egyptians just claim these structures as their own, as an illusionary appearance of power? A drought killed the ancient Egyptians, yet their supposed sphinxes show evidence of submersion, and thousands of years of heavy rainfall, this points a logical finger at an earlier creation date. With modern technologies, testing equipment, penetrating radar, and the internet, it appears the truth of who we really are, and who our ancestors were, may be revealed to us all. We recently shared the astonishing discovery of a colossal ancient pyramid, Cholula. Not only the largest ancient pyramid, believed to have ever been found on Earth, 
but also the biggest ancient structure ever found, just like that of the Bosnian Pyramid, long assumed a mound of peculiar shape. This truly huge structure was buried under often meters of fertile earth. Some claim it was buried to conceal it from invaders, such as David Carballo, an archaeologist at Boston University, who explained to BBC Future, quote, it was abandoned sometime in the 7th or 8th century CE. The Chilateca had a newer pyramid temple located nearby, which the Spaniards destroyed, end quote. While geologists argue that over the centuries, or indeed millennia it has stood, the mud bricks its exterior was created from have fertilized and naturally grown over this huge structure, earth which still hides much of its stature from the world to this day. Yet this makes the discovery no less of interest, if anything, it makes it all the more intriguing. Why not fully excavate the site? Are there things being hidden there? What was the purpose of such an astonishing building being made? Was it as a tribute to a deity? Or are we looking at an enormous tomb? Like the claims that circle Giza's three great structures year upon year, are their treasures still buried beneath, just waiting to be found? Interestingly, there does indeed exist an underworld labyrinth beneath this great site. An entire town-sized maze of ancient tunnels littered beneath the site, again a feature akin to Giza. Yet any mention of sarcophagi, treasures, tombs, or any other interesting discoveries, local archaeologists remain curiously silent, regardless of this structure's clear past importance. According to Geophys, the adobe brick pyramid stands 55 meters or 180 feet above the surrounding plain, far shorter than the 137 meters or 449 feet of the Great Pyramid Cheops in Giza but also much wider, measuring 450 by 450 meters, or 1480 by 1480 feet, versus Cheops at 230 by 230 meters, or 750 by 750 feet. Yet we must not forget to mention the astonishing precision present within Giza, seemingly absent this nonetheless gigantic structure, which we find highly compelling.
There are many intriguing ancient ruins still to be explored, still in existence dotting our planet, many of which are yet to be fully explained. Enigmatic stone carvings, and often tool marks left upon quarried or cracked or broken stones, each indicative of lost technology and thus a lost civilization. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient anomalies. The Plain of Jars, located in Laos, being but one of these extraordinary sites. Enormous stone jars that would simply be illogical to create in the modern era, yet would have been even more illogical for our well-studied yet far less capable ancient ancestors to have created them. Why these mysterious sculptures were created, and possibly most important of all, when they were made, is an enigma still left within our past. And the Kachari ruins are of no exception. A set of stone ruins located in Dimapur, Nagaland, northeast India. According to academia, their history dates back to the 10th century, when they apparently appeared during what is now known as the Kachari civilization. According to this hypothesis, they were created by the Kachari kingdom, which ruled the area before the Anam invasion during the 13th century AD. They are a series of mushroom dome pillars which, just like that of the ancient jars of Laos, their original purpose remains a complete mystery, and although of considerable size and weight, are still considered to have once been a part of a game similar to that of chess, yet any explanation of how these enormous statues were moved remains conveniently unexplained. As expected, due to their inexplicable nature, the site has been largely overlooked by funded academia. It seems that the fact that these remnants are clearly indicative of a civilization of tremendous capabilities, including the refined finish of the sculptures, has meant that academics simply avoid discussing or exploring the site in its entirety. Not only is the site neglected by academic study, but the vast majority of these ancient artifacts have unfortunately crumbled during their long life which has led many alternative researchers to volley against the Indian government, demanding that more be done to protect the site and to subsequently avoid the ancient site from suffering even more erosion or of unfortunate vandalism. Who created the Kachari ruins? When were they created? What was its original purpose? It seems, regardless of these questions being of great historical importance, what is apparently more precious to funded individuals and the institutions in which their conformity to existing, yet highly disputed chronologies of man subsequently prop up their selected fields of apparent study, and are more than willing to aid in the continuation of fallacies, if that means the continued survival of their field of choice. It would appear that these ancient stoneworks, each of an enormous size, are all ancient uparts, whose sheer existence is enough of a deterrent for academia to even mention the existence of, let alone publish any explanatory studies of the ruins, absent any published journals. Away from academic ignorance, however, the local population inevitably has their own supposed surviving story regarding the creation and origins of the stones, which now forms a nice amalgam of Indian mythology. As per this mythology, Bahim and Hadimba got married at the site in antiquity, later giving birth to Gadoka at the site. And according to this local folklore, it's said that Bahim and his child, 
used to play chess here with these pieces, and although clearly of mythology, it is better to attribute the ruins and to attempt an explanation in regards to a creator of tremendous capabilities, we feel. Better this than what we currently experience. Complete ignorance of this precious yet highly delicate, still surviving ancient ruins. It is a place which we find highly compelling. From their curious writings made upon cuneiform blocks, there are endless areas of intrigue when it comes to ancient Mesopotamia. A fascinating and rare civilization, which had an equally striking appearance, often adorned with trinkets, with tightly braided, often thick flowing hair, with royals regularly depicted as giants. It is also a very special area of interest for our so-called fringe research. The reason for this is that Mesopotamia is one of those rare chapters of ancient civilization which, regardless of all previously noted, has strangely continued to be accepted by mainstream institutions, field studies apparently still flowing. As previously mentioned, this astonishing, and we feel, far older than currently claimed civilization is drenched with marvels of seemingly impossible ancient craftsmanship, many of which near impossible to explain in regards to currently claimed history. The reoccurring theme one finds when another post-Ice Age technologically regressed ancestor moves in to utilize these structures offered safety will, in turn, leave behind an archaeological timeline. This then allows for an inaccurate and often blatantly ignorant dating. But to muddy said waters, are then met with a detailed, competent reconstruction of said lifestyles, religious beliefs, systems, etc., etc., all in regards to a permitted ancestor, rather than any details or a logical explanation as to their technologies or constructions. However, as mentioned, going back to the recurring event we notice is the briefest of these supposed builders' legacies, for when one has laid claim to an antediluvian wonder, the lack of understandings regarded the fortress's strength, or indeed how to efficiently use them. The ingenious design of some of the most impressive fortresses of Peru, Sacsayhuaman, Kulap for example, we posit, if under the control of the original constructors, would have been near impossible to evade and were completely self-sustained. Yet the academically claimed builders all seem to conveniently fold within less than a few centuries at most. However, the subject of most importance and currently the most compelling exhibits of an ancient advanced civilization is the nature of many of the artifacts, either recovered or now documented as having been depicted across much of their stone-cut artwork. And across Mesopotamia, notably the Assyrian civilization, they had achieved levels of technological sophistication simply impossible to have achieved in the brief, currently attested chronological life of said civilizations. Whether the Assyrian civilization and many others spanning ancient Mesopotamia have indeed been accurately identified then an explanation for the array of remarkable technologies they had developed becomes a very hard area of archaeology to describe. Scuba divers, secret teachings, sophisticated levels and practices of law and healthcare, and most notably, and indeed the most vital section of the civilization skill set, their intimate understandings that lay within their ability to create irrigation and agricultural systems which rival even those of the modern day. These tremendous abilities tend to make us suspect that either the dating of Mesopotamia is drastically off, or these feats of engineering were, like many others, adopted by this later settlement, ultimately decoded and claimed as an invention of their own. Astonishing legends of the past, accompanied by an astonishing level of sophisticated astronomical knowledge, is another crucial factor which not only indicates what we are attesting, but what we feel could have only come from an extremely old source, tributes to which seemingly found incorporated into nearly all surviving relics. Yet, as if academia claim, this ancient civilization merely wielded stone and very later bronze tools. The question is, how did they create such astonishing ancient ruins? 
The multi-ton Lamassu, a mysterious stone-winged horse we have covered previously on numerous occasions, it seems just like that of the so-called pre-Incas, displayed levels of sophistication specifically around horticulture, far in advance of what we should have logically presumed to see. It is as if they had a helping hand, by a far more ancient yet highly advanced intellect somewhere within antiquity. Are these Upart surviving remnants, memories left by a pre-cataclysmic civilization, once capable of such sophisticated irrigating and building on steep mountain land with ease, we can for now only hypothesize. It is a pursuit we find highly compelling. Who built the Great Pyramids? Who carved Kailash Temple? Who quarried, carved, and transported the Moai statues around the coastline of Easter Island? The reason for our persistence in reiterating these questions is that it unlocks one's perception to the reality of unknowns. They suddenly notice that there are some things about the past in which they had been taught were a lie. The ancient marvels of India as but one example. How can those who are placed in a position of trust, responsibility, and above all, critical thought, explain these stoneworks away as ones coming from the hands of untrained slaves? Yet even when these ruins are presented as that of the work of ancient masters, the tools and metal technologies available to any of them were simply incapable of accomplishing these refined, masterfully finished feats, sometimes leaving walls of granite so precisely executed they became reflective. The more one studies these stoneworked anomalies, still abundant amongst the many as yet unexplained sites all over the world, you soon begin to see scars and marks left upon these stones reminiscent of modern-day electric power tools, and some indicative of stone-cutting technology, which evades even our own modern capabilities, like that of the star holes we have covered in the past. These mysterious artifacts suggest the civilization responsible was not only advanced, but possibly once more advanced than modern man. Panoia's Sanctuary According to academia, once ordered to be built by the Roman senator Caius Calpurnius Rufinus, they claim the sanctuary was dedicated to infernal deities, headed by Serapis and the deities of Lapatius. However, due to the astonishing precision of some of the stone cuts made into these large granite boulders, we posit that the Romans were merely re-inhabitors of this, along with many other ancient structures to which mystery history attests the creation of were far out of the capabilities of the Roman Empire itself. Furthermore, that the Romans rapidly recorded technological and agricultural developments, just like that of the Inca, Mayan, Egyptian, etc., was largely the result of deciphering, reverse engineering, and the eventual adoption of technological relics left by a far more capable once world-going, yet now lost, civilization. At the site, there are many impressive ancient stone-carving achievements. Perfectly square boreholes, largely perfect cylindrical drill holes, left in the hard granite many thousands of years ago. The volume and abundance of lichen species, and the sizes these colonies have become, also confirming the great age and authenticity of the boreholes and the site itself. Ultimately, if one wishes to conclude that this ancient sanctuary was indeed the work of the claim builder, proof must be provided that said individuals were capable of such incredible work, not only capable of the task, but the cut upon stones engulfed with millennia-old colonies of lichen without seemingly damaging them. For many colonies now draped across the stoneworks, we attest are far older than the Roman Empire itself with many flowers already a considerable size before they watched the Romans arrive, thrive, and eventually disappear. Yet alas, without biological proof of the age of some of these species, and the fact that any funded institution would dismiss any of the dates we would pursue as anomalies, it appears the jury remains out on the site, and the debate rages on. It is a place which we find highly compelling. 
inexplicable, enigmatic, still-surviving ancient Uparts. Named after their academically claimed creators, the Kachari Ruins, a set of large and incredibly heavy relics whose purpose or indeed true age remains a largely ignored area of study by any individual who depends on institutional funding for their career survival. Yet there are many other ancient sites which litter modern-day India whom have an equally enigmatic history. Some of these sites we have covered in the past, like that of Kailash Temple, a remarkable ancient achievement carved directly from a bedrock of earth with such artistic vision and accuracy that any logical explanation for its creation remains a challenging and still elusive reality surrounding not only the many sites we have already covered, but countless others which still lay either undiscovered or deliberately ignored by mainstream media. Yet our next area of interest has encountered a polar experience, having been officially acknowledged as one of India's most important of ancient sites. Known as the Udiagri Caves, they are a set of 20 rock-cut caves near Vidisha, Madhya Pradesh, and according to mainstream historians, dates from the early years of the 5th century. We have often postulated that some ancient religions, having survived the test of time, and we have often encountered Buddhist or Hindu belief systems engraved upon currently inexplicable stone carvings and ancient structures, which we feel are indicative of a lost civilization's advanced capabilities. Cave 5, in particular, possesses depictions of ancient reptilian creatures, later attributed to ancient religious systems. Yet the original inspiration for these carvings is an ongoing mystery, and whether inspired by religious beliefs or possible real events, is an ongoing mystery that mainstream academics continue to stifle the legitimacy and mainstream adoption of. Claimed as that of Vishnu, this depiction of a giant reptile consuming comparatively tiny human figures is a depiction which is undoubtedly of great historical importance Yet we hypothesize that only a small portion of existing human history has ever been explored in detail, or indeed permitted to be a mainstream possibility. Udiagri literally means the Sunrise Mountain, and is, interestingly, not the only ancient site with this name located within modern-day India. Udiagri Wazi was a Buddhist and Bhagavad Gita site by the second century, as evidenced by the Heliodorus Pillar. Yet this inhabitation is possibly merely the adoption of a surviving structure. Additionally, while the Heliodorus pillar has supposedly been preserved without damage, many other similar sites are all but dilapidated ruins, possibly suggesting that this claim of creation is in reality a hoax. And while Buddhism was prominent in Sanchi near Uriyagari in the last centuries of the first millennium BCE, it is highly possible that the religious teachings date from a lost period of ancient history. According to Das and Willis, recent archaeological evidence, such as the Udiagari lion capital, suggests that there was a sun temple at Udiagari. The Surya tradition in Udiagari dates from at least the 2nd century, and possibly one that predated the arrival of Buddhism. It is this tradition that gives it the Sunrise Mountain name and we feel is yet more supportive evidence in defense of the channel's postulations. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Many of the most ancient stone structures we cover here upon our channel, whose origins undoubtedly span far back into Earth's antiquity, in our experience are often, unfortunately, due to the rigid, unchanging conclusions set forth in regards to academic history just over a century ago, will not only encounter reoccurring anomalies, suspiciously precise stone cuts, unexplainable by any of our lesser capable yet institutionally permitted ancestors with whatever said civilization were to equip with, yet regardless and rather arrogantly refuse to budge in terms of the official tale of events. This then means that anyone with critical thinking skills will continually and often come across feats of ancient engineering somehow accomplished by said people, enormous and perfectly refined stone carvings, that, according to, and as a result of, academic institutions' reluctance to budge, 
must be explained away as having, somehow, once been cut and created with tools of a soft metal. Yet in reality, this is simply an impossibility. It is a lie only possible on paper, yet this lie is mass-printed all over our planet. It is in Mystery History's opinion that these advanced and thus inexplicable features which litter our videos in abundance are each and all clear evidence of a far more advanced yet far more ancient and thus lost civilization. Additionally, another reoccurring theme anyone exploring this confusing, enigmatic, and although little shared, ever-growing list of ancient, unexplainable structures, no funded individual dare attempt to explain the methodology of said build, but will find that they are, instead, extremely eager to willingly and immorally seal the fate of these marvelous buildings' legacy, condemning them to the ever-growing list we like to call the label of the tomb. A ruthless, willing, and well-funded army of researchers tasked with exploring any archaeology from a very specific time period. Thus, we posit any re-inhabitation of said site's archaeology is used nearly always absent an explanation as to how they built said buildings, depending the construction on whom is most convenient. An eventual attribution for all of these exquisite and quite possibly incredible important historical relics as simply tombs. We have in the past touched upon false doors, claimed witchcraft, which seemingly permeated all ancient civilizations worldwide, from littering the 1,000-ton-plus toppled obelisk of Aksum, exposing the advanced ruins in Ethiopia, but also the Giza Plateau among countless other locations on Earth seemingly spanning many lost civilizations' ruins. And the site which is the focus of this video, we feel, is one of the most awe-inspiring false doors on Earth. When it comes to false doors, a sheer mountain side carved away perfectly, not only creating a tomb of master stonework in a time of history, when this should have simply been impossible. Its false door, however, proof of its far greater age, leading into some incredible landscape, makes it a site which undoubtedly adds intrigue to the mystery of the false door, and whether we will ever unlock its fullest potentials. We previously covered one in Peru in a subject-specific film. Link will be at the end. Local legend claimed it was once a portal. It is clearly a false door, as seen all over the world, just like that of Axum, seemingly laser-cut into the hillside. What we found highly compelling, however, was that it had been cut into the only mountainside in all of Peru to have possessed an extremely rare earth element in the stone, which we now use in high-end transmission of radio, sound, and light waves. Every day, we get closer and closer to finally understanding what these doors were. Kapilikea Rock Tomb is not only an extraordinarily well-located ruin, located in Kirkdilim, 27 kilometers north of Churum, Turkey, on a rocky, steep, rough-formed, thus hard bedrock. It is clearly a relic of one of the lost civilizations we have long been studying not only due to the precision of the stone cut, the masterful choice of location, but also the use of the false door. In our opinion, proves beyond doubt that this ruin was made by the same lost civilization or civilizations as we are currently pursuing an identity and a legacy for here upon our channel. A civilization once capable of moving and building with 1,000 plus ton megalithic stones, possibly even the builders of or the descendants of the true group of people responsible for the great pyramids themselves. Many things which do not add up are often overlooked or dismissed. But in our experience, the ancient ruins never lie if you let them tell the story and explore said relics with a quest to understand what they may still be able to tell us. It does not matter what others may claim, for as we know, the truth will always prevail. And that is something we find highly compelling. Something which has always puzzled us at Mystery History 
Although the mountains of pyramids, the gigantic megaliths, indestructible artifacts, or the out-of-place artifacts, is the massive amount of underground cities found all over our planet. Extraordinary undertakings, seemingly necessary at some time in the very distant past. Complex tunnel networks almost telepathically hewn direct to each other. Cut from hard bedrocks, with many exhibiting considerable efforts committed into security. Huge rolling doors can be found at many crucial junctions within the underground systems, as can be found, for example, amongst the underground cities of Cappadocia. Derinkuya, in particular, still exhibits its rolling door still in situ. No one displaying the builder's impressive capabilities, but also the abilities of the rolling stone operators, as whoever built these contraptions unarguably still possessed megalithic stone-moving knowledge. Knowledge, we hypothesize, is lost knowledge, due to the builders of said sites also a lost civilization, which instead of where they have been placed chronologically by funded investigations, actually, we believe, originate an unimaginably longer time ago, placed far within an antiquity not only lost, but actively dismissed. But regardless of the impressive feats these underground cities were to create, the question persists, why? Why go to so much effort? The cities of Uskanakt, Derinkuyu, and Kemakli, all found just within Cappadocia, Turkey, are not only some of the most complete underground dwellings, with Derinkuyu estimated to have once been capable of housing 20,000 people. Derinkuyu even connects to Kemakli via an underground tunnel an astonishing 8 kilometers long. And this is but a tiny fraction of the ancient underground cities, which have so far been found all over the world, with more discovered each day. Many seem to have simply been sealed when no longer needed. Thus, many still lay undisturbed to this day. Derinkuyu, for example, was only rediscovered when a wall was knocked down in a house during renovation work all seemingly constructed around the same time, yet any definitive motivations for why ancient man decided upon such drastic efforts worldwide have yet to be substantiated. Their construction remains a complete mystery, a fact we find highly intriguing. Many people will argue that these cities were chiseled by slaves over many years and at great suffering, a safe bet narrative which jives with the mainstream. When it comes to the academically claimed ages, and due to the people during said ages substantially lacked any advanced stone-cutting technologies imperative for creating such vast works. This argument, however, thanks to the volumes of examples of exquisite, astounding feats discovered as a special few of these underground complexes, not only installed clearly to demonstrate an acoustic level of awareness on par with prodigal ability and possibly many other as yet undeciphered features displaying excelled understanding of many of life's most intriguing subjects. The Hypogeum, located within modern-day Malta, is but one of many examples which can be presented as proof that whoever built these underground layers at minimum possessed astonishing acoustic knowledge, far ahead of man, as well as almost physics-defying stone-moving techniques displayed in the structure itself. The hypogeum possesses a characteristic designed into its construction, which is simply astonishing. It is so mystifying that although very little is known regarding how it was achieved, a certain frequency it can amplify which seems to stimulate the building's amplifying capabilities, as if the entire structure resonates, and has since been shown to also affect the human brain becoming known as the God Frequency. Who built these underground labyrinths? Why? When did they build them? We find these incredible relics of a lost civilization highly compelling. Many people from around the world have now, fortunately, been presented with and hopefully convinced enough thanks to platforms such as YouTube, particularly Egyptian constructional revisionists, to now realize that there are many as yet unexplained feats of ancient engineering which literally drenches these magnificent structures and its equally mysterious sandstone plateau below. 
Yet we further expose many other indicative features, which were seemingly impossible feats of ancient engineering, which we hope has helped a lot of people to realize that there are many fallacies in historical doctrine, many gaps in academic and curricular understandings, many things dismissed with flaky strategies and theories which have again and again, thanks to modern computer engines, been proven as impossible maneuvers. It seems many people, and a considerable amount of money, goes into keeping a stranglehold over the pyramid's possible origins and original function, inevitably shrouding these structures in a veil of secrecy. In addition to the original pyramid blocks and the enormous megalithic exoskeleton visible in a few obscure areas of the pyramid's lower regions, we have also in the past put forward the hypothesis that due to the advanced nature of many of the pyramid's casing stones and the drastic differences in ages they appear to be, all made with the same type of rock, thus to display such drastically different levels of erosion, is undeniably evidence of them being installed at many different times. Yet although claimed as being built within known history, no documentation of the installation of the blocks, or indeed any explanation as to how these pyramids were built, all remain elusive. Several different styles were put upon these monuments, we feel, at vastly different times within antiquity. We posit that they are clear proofs of a number of past civilizations' conservation efforts, but due to these compelling and visible proofs, one has to consider that the Great Pyramid's origins are vastly more prehistoric than could ever be publicly accepted, and due to these features having seemingly survived due to what we suspect was a number of considerable efforts to shield them from the environment by a number of different, extremely ancient, yet all highly capable, yet now lost civilizations, which we have identified in previous work as that of the Cyclopean Civilization and the Polygonal Civilization. But I digress. Many of you who have donated towards the channel and to reserve a book may be wondering when the channel's accompanying books will be published. However, I assure you Mystery History intends to go in-depth regarding his and other findings surrounding not only the ancient pyramids, but also the many other compelling, seemingly impossible ancient legacies found throughout Giza's plateau and many museums, and many other controversial sleuth-gathered factors from throughout antiquity creating the type of evidence-driven, visually illustrated examinational content in which the books will be exclusively focused upon. All of these factors are reasons why the books will not be written hastily. As my knowledge grows, so does my understanding of what makes ancient ruins so enigmatic, and I believe the larger my research, the better the go-to guides will eventually be. I just wanted to reassure you that Mystery History has not forgotten about any of you. Returning to our opening statement, however, many are now aware that there does not exist a valid explanation for the construction of the pyramids. Even if one had unlimited slaves, it is not a case of muscle, but rather a lack of space in which to utilize such. Yet what many who have not explored Giza and the surrounding connected ruins on foot are often oblivious of the astonishing array of ancient temples, clearly dating from the pyramid builders, not only lost for eons in the sand of the Sahara, but has preserved some in astonishing conditions. Ancient Egypt, its great pyramids, its eight-sided Cheops, its incredibly well-preserved, once long-engulfed temples, and the inexplicable stonework of ancient Egypt is but one of many areas from a world of ruins which we not only intend to unravel as much as possible, but it is an investigational struggle which we find highly compelling.